good day and welcome this is going to be a bit of a track guide for Lasarth we're going to start off with group one we may do a bit of group three just to have put my theories to the test so first we're going to do a walkthrough and then there'll be a couple of hot laps so let's get started starting with turn one as you see the approach you want to stick to the left hand side to get as much of a smooth line through that first right hand corner as possible so you can stay to the inside the right hand side of the track for the chicane if you're in a group one car it's quite easy to, quite easy to take it flat other cars you may have to or group c cars which are quite quick or group three cars which don't have the downforce you may have to lift but either way you want to end up on the inside of the circuit on the right hand side just on the apex of the corner or just after the apex of the corner to break for the first chicane for Dunlop chicane. So here we see my car hitting the apex of this corner just where the track straightens up is generally my braking point right there just as the car straightens up out of this corner on the right hand side generally I'm putting the brakes on for the first left. The first left you don't want to go too deep you need to stick to the, the left hand side of the track through the first corner to get a good run through the right hand corner of the chicane to make it as straight as possible and to get the power down as early as possible. Naturally the car is going to push a little bit wide with the speed you're going so ending up left hand side or, or you know mid left of the track is fine just so you can straighten up the right hander. You do not want to cut this corner. Always keep your outside wheel on the track. This left hander, you will pick up a penalty very easily through here. The right hander following is a little more forgiving for penalties. You will still pick one up easily if you're not careful, but you can often run your outside tire over that curb just a little and get away with it. On exit, you don't want to run your inside tire over the gutter here or over that grating as soon as you do you'll pick up a penalty for running too wide so you need to keep your outside tire at least on the blue uh, blue and yellow curbing the left right following Dunlop is pretty easy in just about all cars that's entirely flat out you just stick to the left hand side of the road during the left corner and you'll easily go down the right hand side of the road through the right hander. You need to be lined up on the right hand side as you see my car placed here and hugging this white line. My next braking point is often measured against this final bollard. I use that or I use this. It can start there depending on the car. You know if it's a slower car more downforce or different type I'll often just take a moment or hesitate a bit and then get on the brakes around about here but the majority of my measurements for braking is taken from that final bollard as you're coming through here the goal is to tuck in nice and tight for that left hander and get as good of a drive as possible from about mid apex and the following right hander depending on your car once again high downforce can take the following right hander flat some other cars just have to take a bit of a lift as they crest that the following right hander. So what I'm looking for here is a really good turn in and good speed to hold the inside line. Ideally if I get the grip that I want it's this change in the curbing. You notice how the blue and yellow is quite flat and then becomes quite bumpy will be the word I'm going to use for that one. It's, it's that point, if, if I've got a good turn in and I'm holding a good line, from this point on I can actually accelerate in a group 1 car and actually group 3 for the most part. You can accelerate from here, from mid apex. And the car will just drift just nicely out and line you up for a nice cut across the end of the following curb. Actually we'll, we'll just wander up there. We'll just wander. So for the following curb, 
you don't want to take it too early. Ideally, you just you cut round the last bollard, and you're often just cutting over the end of this curb to get a good, nice straight run over this crest. The crest can be quite tricky. If you're too wide, the crest will make you understeer and go off the track quite quickly. If you do start to understeer, and you'll, you'll notice, you'll know when you get it right. If you do start to understeer, you have to lift at the crest so you don't go over this curb. Sometimes a curb saves you, but you don't want to rely on it. It's too risky. But provided you get, it, get that right-hander right, as long as you're not accelerating too soon from the left-hander, you'll hook it up and you'll fly out through here towards the next corner. And now we're on to Tet Rouge, which is one of the most important corners of the track, one of the toughest to get right, and you need to get it right every lap in Grand Turismo, especially because it will penalize you quite heavily if you get it wrong. So I generally use this mark here, just as I approach the with Obviously the grass meets the, the blue painted line. That's often my point where I will break or lift or be my judgment for when I'm going to break or lift for the corner. Group 1 is often just a lift. Well, in your modern prototypes, it's a lift. Your Group C, you're often breaking for it. And Group 3 is definitely a break. You need to really nail this apex. You cannot take it too wide, otherwise you'll drift wide at the exit and you'll take a big penalty. You can actually cut this a little bit. You can get your outside tires onto the curb, only just. You sort of see where the, the tire marks are. Too far over to the right and you'll get a penalty. But if you cut it just right, you can get a, get a really nice line through here. Ideally, you don't want to rely on that during a race because it's... It, Cutting the inside will cost you more in terms of penalty time than running wide. So you're better off trying to learn the line to keep two tyres on the track and keeping them within the boundaries when you exit. So you can run your right hand set of wheels, right hand set of wheels, up on this curb, but any further over, and you'll pick up a penalty very quick. And you're going through here so fast, it is so easy to do so. So you've really got to learn the line, when to lift off and when to break, and pinch that apex nicely so you're not going to drift too much too wide. Too much too wide. That's the one. And if you are out here with your right-hand wheels on the curb, make sure they come off before the end of the curb. You may pick up a penalty for running too long down here so if you're you're still here at this point you really need to get off and get on the right hand side of that white line you get it right it's worth tenths down the straight it's worth a lot of time so it's one you need to practice and it's one that, that will come with time but very difficult no matter how many times you do it, it it's <laughs> it's very difficult to get right every time so now we're down to the first chicane you see the, I believe it's 200 meter board there. Yeah. So that white board in the middle of the screen is a 200 meter board. Plenty of braking markers here, so you can use that board. Often that's too early, but make note of it. You've got this brake in the Armco here, which you can use. You've got the fellows in the orange overalls. And you've got the photographer in green. So depending on your car, you can pick any one of these points to use as a braking reference. For my reference at the moment, the Group 1 Toyota, I use the photographer. For Group 3, I'm often back here with the brake or the guys in the orange suit. Now, there's a couple of different approaches to this corner. Myself, I like to, as I said before, use that photographer as my braking point. I'll shift down to about third gear I'll let go of the brakes and either accelerate or just coast through that right-hander. And then as I come up to the apex of the chicane, I'll brake again, shift down to second, get through the apex, straighten her up and blast her as soon as I can. You've got to be careful all the way through here, cutting too much of these curbs. 
you can you know run up on them a little bit but you definitely don't want your outside tire on the yellow and blue curving you will pick up a penalty very quickly you have to be very wary of the exit it's better to go a bit slower and not run so wide going too wide at the exit even slightly getting your outside tires up and over this curb will give you a penalty and it's the, it's the easiest thing to do because you're pushing so hard you run through the apex and you run a bit wide and it's only a bit but it will it will penalize you for doing so so when you straighten up from the apex you want to use as little wheel movement as possible through the right hander and keep it nice and straight the second chicane is a lot more difficult to pick i find in the first chicane there's less obvious roadside markings around here as you see the car is just past the 200 meter board that is way too early for the, this chicane this chicane is a different profile to the first it's faster in is is not as sharp but you're taking a much later apex compared to the first one so depending on the car i use this bush or these trees when you're approaching it you can often just see the tree trunks they stick out in this light it's quite dark often in the race you see them are quite they're quite brown and amongst all the green so they do stick out quite nicely so i use that as a reference for often group three i'll be breaking around that bush or on the trunks for group one i can use a 100 meter board they've got a lot more downforce and they'll handle being pulled up around about here so same sort of approach once again i'm shifting down to about third i coast through here it's often a lot faster through the entry of the chicane I take a little bit wider point here, so so the first left hander I'm turning a bit more left. Take a little bit wider line there to take a late apex because the exit does tighten up a bit more than the first chicane. So you've in running wide, you'll very easily pick up a penalty here. So take a late apex, get the car around to the right, drift out to the left, but once again be cautious getting up on the curbs, you will pick up a penalty. If you do it right, you'll fly out of here and down the next straight. So we approach Mulsanne Corner, the very tight right-hander at the end of the long straight. We've got quite a few markers here. We've got this lovely signpost. Looks very dark in photo mode, but it's quite bright and quite visible most of the time. You've got the start of this curve, and in this lighting it actually changes a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess you've gone from the rippled curb to a smooth one. you got the fellow in the orange shirt there. Orange overalls and these two guys here. So there's plenty of points to, to reference as braking markers. Myself, for the Group 1 Toyota, I am using the end of this curb where it changes. You can really see the change in color. So I'm using this really as my reference point. For the group one group three i use that sign there but the important thing is to follow the racing line you'll notice the slightly shinier part of the track it hits this apex and then drifts out wide you really want to pull it up yeah so you really want to pull it up to cut the right hander Get your inside tires over the right hand curb just take a bit of the tarmac on the inside of that curb to straighten the car up as soon as possible and get a good drive down the next straight so you don't want to take out the bollards but you really want to get the right hand tire over here oh stopping me didn't even know that you really want to get the right hand tire over there and straighten up as much as possible there is plenty of grip on the exit if you do run too wide, like you can get away with getting your car out over here. You just don't want to be turning any more to the right. You don't want to be still be turning by the time you get to this curb. If you're still turning to the right and you're putting the power down, you're going to be in that wall. So if you get out over this curb, straighten her up or back off the power at least while you gain control of your car. But you can... You know, if you're straight by the time you get over here, you can blast it down here. There's plenty of grip. Ideally, you don't go too wide. 
it's about the same speed either way. So there's no real advantage going over the curb or sticking to the racing line. It's generally just safer and you've got a bit more breathing room. But you can do so, just be wary of the curb and what your steering wheel or controller is doing at the time. So heading down to Indianapolis, we've got the 100 meter board for this fast right hander. It's an insane corner really. I often don't look at the 100 meter board, I use this lovely green patch right here. So you see the change in color. You can use the start of the patch or the end of the patch as your reference. For the Group 1 Toyota, I am using the end of the patch. And I'm often just lifting from here and taking that right hander. You really want to apex this nicely. You do not want to get your right hand wheels too far over. If you, I believe if you get them just over this curb, you will pick up a penalty. So they can certainly ride the curb, but getting your right hand wheels up over here, you will pick up a penalty. So the Toyota will coast through here and often start braking at the end of the curb or just as I straighten the car up from about here. Group 3 or lower downforce cars often have to do a uh, more of a lift or more of a brake before this right hander. But the same thing applies. You want to stick to the inside. Your car wants to be on the inside around here and then braking in a straight line for Indianapolis. So as soon as the car is straight around here you want it to be braking around this area. As far as Indianapolis goes, provided you've got your braking right there, you'll be nice and slow. You'll hug the inside line here and you'll feel it. You'll feel the grip. You can actually accelerate quite early from here. Sometimes if you get your braking wrong and, you, and you'll know it because you're not actually accelerating until you're nearer the exit of the curb. But you can actually start accelerating from around about here in the middle of the corner, which will give you a good drive down to Arnage. And there's plenty of grip on the exit. Careful not to run too wide, but there is, as you see, concrete on the exit just at the end of this curb, and your car often exits around about here. So even if you did step over the curb, it's often not too painful. You just gotta be careful you're not gonna spin the car by still turning to the left. But it's not too painful, but ideally you exit around here and blast off down to Arnage. This is really the breaking point for Arnage. There's a few places. This is my toughest one to find the right breaking point for. So you've got this white line and the fellow in the orange suit overalls. I often use this break or this change in the fence as my breaking point. It's easy to spot. It's always there. It's not going to get knocked down. In the case of the current time of day settings, we've got a nice shadow there. So you can just look at the track and use it as your breaking point. Or just when that hits the edge of the screen. But yeah, but I don't have a lot of other references. There is a change in the color of the track around here but I just cannot see it with the current time of day so certain time of day settings will you'll see different marks tire marks on the ground or, or a different color in the track which which I've used before if you're at the 50 board you're way too late it's a very tricky corner it's always slower than it seems and it's very slippery if you're a bit too wide on the exit but provided you break, so I always recommend breaking earlier for this. You're better off breaking earlier than later for this. But you get that right. You want to hug the inside. Get your right hand wheel up on this. This is quite a, you can't see it. But it's got quite a camber to that curb. You want to get your right hand wheel up on here. And accelerate as soon as possible. If you go over here. See this part of the tarmac and here and here. Is very slippery. And you'll struggle to get traction and struggle to keep the car pointing straight. You need your turning done by now, and you can blast that over here. There's plenty of grip over here, but just a bit to the left, and you'll be out of grip very quickly, and it makes it very difficult to get a good drive down the final sort of major straight of the circuit. And now we come to one of the best parts of this track. I absolutely love the Porsche curves. Such a beautiful flowing part of the track it's still a challenge every time I've, I've done this one so many times but still a challenge to get right every time but this is my marker I use as a reference for my braking often the group 3 cars I'm around the start of the green and with the group 1 I'm still learning 
I'm actually readjusting since the since the new physics update. But I'm starting to use the end of this curb, or just before the end. But I'm using this, not the curb, the, the green patch. But it's really, this is what I'm using as a reference for my breaking point. So you can use the start of the end and just adjust it. You know, you either hesitate a little bit before or after the green patch starts or ends. And you just adjust it for yourself. But ideally you need to come in fairly late. You can't turn in too early, otherwise you'll be on the grass a little bit, which will push you wide. But you need to come in a little late. You see the curb starts a little bit further around the corner than, I guess, conventional. But this is where the corner starts. You do not want to take this too fast because you end up on the left-hand side of the track. And that will compromise your run through the following two left-handers. So you can end up... In the middle, if you're carrying decent speed through here, you can end up in about the middle of the track. Often if you're too far to the right, you probably haven't maximized the speed through that corner. Most cars have enough grip to end up in the middle and then get back over to the right, just fine. If you're too far over to the left, you're really going to have to compromise your run through the next left-hander. So the following left-hander, provided you've got your car over to the right and along this white line, in a group one car this is flat you just hit the apex hug that inside curb and you'll be fine group three may require a lift and lower downforce cars are going to require more of a lift but you get it right the car will just scythe through that corner and end up on the right hand side you do have to be careful of the wall with a bit of practice you get a feel for it so you know when you need to lift a bit more if you need to adjust late in the corner Ideally, you do not hit this wall. It will compromise you more than just a small lift to adjust. But provided you get it right, you'll just come out the right-hand side and down this curb for the next left-hander. This one here, once again, no braking, but a small lift. A bigger lift in Group 3, a small lift in Group 1. Maybe in practice sessions with no fuel in the car, you can get away with it flat. But you do need to end up on the left hand side. You cannot let the car drift too far to the right. You can, you can get away with it. But for the fastest line, you need to be around about here. And taking note of, I guess, the black box of that white line. Around about here is where you're going to think about turning for the next right hander, braking, shifting down, things like that. If you're too far to the right, you've got to brake more and you take a slower average speed through this corner so ideally from about the middle of the track you'll never end up too far to the left you would have just if you end up too far to the left over here you would have compromised your speed through that left hander too much so you're often in, often in the middle of the track for this right hander the right hander is quite a long corner you're probably mid track most of the way around and you're aiming to take a late apex so you will catch up with the curb around about here probably around about this concrete point you'll pick up the apex and you just hug the curb and hug this inside line you need to be on the right hand side for the next left hander which is one of the trickiest trickiest corners here but you're hugging this inside line and then as soon as the track goes straight you'll notice it a lot more in car as soon as the track goes straight you're often braking or lifting for this left hander. You need to get your left hand tires up over this curb. Going too wide is off camber. So if you're a little bit wide, it, the car's going to push and it's going to feel horrible. If you get it right, you'll get your tires up on this curb and you're able to accelerate out from about here and not run too wide. If you're a little bit wide, say around here, for the inside tires then you're going to have to be off the accelerator a lot longer before you can get on the power again to get out because running too wide here you go over this curb you'll get a penalty it's a very weird spot sometimes it'll give you a penalty for almost nothing and sometimes you can actually run quite wide and get nothing get no penalty at all it's a bit strange so i don't trust it my right hand tires can go over this, but the left hand tires 
my general rule of thumb is to stay to the left hand side of that white line and provided you hook that left hander up back there it's not going to be a problem you're going to it's going to be fast not going to be a problem at all so it's not so much about the x of the corner it's getting that apex right will give you a speed and avoid the penalties down this section now we're at the final chicane the last i guess four corners of the track you've got a few reference points here you've got the lights you've got the start of the pit entrance you've got the changing of the wall and the two-tone wall here it's about here that i'm braking for most cars group three or group one it's around about here i actually don't look at this wall i've actually <laughs> just noticed it now looking at it but it is about here and it's just a feeling thing that i got i just judged my distance to that yellow curb about right and fly through here but i'm actually going to try practicing that from now on see if that actually helps so you're often down the right you're often you are down the right hand side of this the f the first chicane the first left right is very fast you cut across here you can take quite a bit of the curb i'm often running the inside tires over these yellow bumps whatever you call them I often run them up over here you see where the tie marks are on them and then also cutting this one and i've had my outside tires up on this curb you get away with it too much and you'll get penalized so ideally you keep the outside tires just on the left of the white line and you want to keep it to the right hand side of the track if you're too fast you end up over here you're gonna to have to compromise a lot for the final chicane you want to end up say mid track or over to the right a bit on the exit of that right hander and then i judge my distance to this to the start of the curb on the right for my breaking point for this final chicane the first part you can cut quite heavily you can actually get your outside tire up over here and you will not get a penalty for it there is a fine line too much further over and, and you'll get told off but i certainly aim for this part over the blue and yellow curbing for my outside tire and if i get it wrong and i get a bit further over it doesn't penalize me this one here is a lot tougher you will get a penalty for cutting this one too much so a good line through there through the left hander is going to mean you're going to end up running along here and although you can't see it in photo mode it is also quite the last curb is quite cambered so it's not one that you want to cut anyway because it unsettles the car so you'll cut it nice and straight from that curb if you get it right and you'll run out wide it can be a bit slippery you still don't want to be turning the final right hand is fairly straight anyway provided you get your line right it can be slippery out here so just be careful if you are going wide just to not be turning the car too much but get your power down you can get the power down quite well and off for another lap so thank you for watching my walkthrough and we'll go put it into practice with a few laps